Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another video here. Today is going to be a review of this upper receiver here from Aero Precision. Specifically, this is their M4E1 enhanced 18 inch 223 wild fluted upper. And this was purchased as a complete upper receiver. So on that note, assembly was squared away. Barrel nut was torqued correctly as were these screws to the specified torque they were supposed to be at and the gas block seems to be seated well in place and unlikely to go anywhere anytime soon. So first off, we can talk a little bit about the finish here. Um, this is an FDE Cerakote finish and it does match their up, uh, the lower receiver perfectly as you would probably expect. And then we do have a Magpul K2 grip on here. So if you'd like to see a comparison of a Magpul FDE product, there's that. You can see that the Aero Precision FDE coating is a little browner a uh, little more tan than the actual Magpul grip, but close enough for me. As far as the finish, it seems really high quality. Uh, there is a slight blemish here, but not going to bother me anytime soon. And then some of the QD cups have a few dings on them, but if you were going to use them for a sling, those are going to get dinged up anyway, so not a big deal. So first, let's talk about what enhanced means specifically. Um, you get, as you can see, this, these, these are both the receiver, uh, enhanced receiver sets, by the way, but they kind of have a billet look to them. So this upper sort of resembles what you would often see on a billet upper receiver, but it's not billet. These are in fact Forge 7075. So that's pretty neat. Also, uh, the pin here for your Ford Assist is a threaded set screw. Not, not a set screw, just a threaded screw, but it's not a roll pin that you have to pop in yourself. So that's kind of neat, makes assembly a little easier. And finally, we'll talk about what sort of the claim to fame of the enhanced uh, receivers are is that the handguard itself sits on an extension of the forward receiver, not on the barrel nut. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this handguard off and then I'll go ahead and show you a little more accurately what that means. All right, so we've gotten the handguard off. You can just, it just slides off. You take out these eight screws and slide that bad boy off. So now we can talk about what the enhanced version gets you with this receiver extension that I mentioned. So this uh, part here where the handguard sits, like I've been saying, is an actual extension of the receiver. You can see, so it's an integral part of the upper that the handguard screws into. And the barrel nut actually goes inside of that. So. That's kind of nice. It makes it a lot easier to change barrels and not have to time your barrel nut to get your handguard and gas tube, everything all aligned perfectly. You just torque down your barrel and then throw a handguard on. Um, that does come with its disadvantages though. Uh, it limits the handguards you can choose from. Uh, for me, I don't, I wouldn't foresee that as a big issue because I could use any of the handguards Arrow offers and be happy. But if you have a specific handguard that you really, really like, keep that in mind. Uh, some other companies do make bar mount compatible handguards. I think Seekins Precision has a few and you might could find some on the internet out there, but that is a con just to keep in mind. I also, just a quick note to get the dust cover off, uh, the pin that the dust cover rotates about has to go through this extension. So you can see the hole in front of the dust cover and this set screw uh, closing that hole. So you would take this set screw out and then push it through and it would come out there. So now that we've got the barrel off, I can go ahead, or the handguard off, show you the barrel markings real quick and then give you a closer look at the gas block and the flutes. But now that we've got that out of the way, we'll go ahead and get this handguard back on and continue on. All right, so we've got the handguard back on and we've got the receiver off so we can go ahead and take a look at it a little closer. So, uh, this complete upper just comes with an A2 birdcage, nothing too exciting there. Uh, the gas block inside is Aero Precision's three quarter inch uh, low profile gas block. It is not pinned to the barrel and the barrel is not dimpled for the set screws. So the set screws just rest on the barrel if that's important to you. Uh, the gas tube inside is just a stainless steel uh, rifle length gas tube. This is a rifle length system. This handguard is Aero's enhanced M-Lock handguard. Uh, it's 15 inch model. It's 11.2 ounces. And the reason I ended up going with this handguard was I wanted a continuous Picatinny upper rail. Uh, some of the other Atlas options, if you look online, this section doesn't have a rail. 
And I think that'd be nice for, you know, a carbine you plan to be shooting on the move or something, and they're a lot slimmer. But for this one, I kind of wanted the look for this SPR build of the monolithic full Picatinny upper rail. And this handguard is also uh, pretty wide. I believe the inner diameter is like 1.72 inches or something. What I'm trying to show you here on the bottom is it's pretty flat down here. So uh, it makes shooting off of barricades and bags and things pretty handy. Also, these sides here are kind of, I believe what they call like a scalloped, but they're really comfortable to hold. They provide a lot of grip without being like super rough and tearing up your hands. So another nice feature is that it does have these tabs here that protrude past the upper receiver. So these are kind of an anti-rotation tab. And I mean, this upper is on here solid. The rails line up perfectly. It's a monolithic rail up here. Um, I would trust putting an optic out onto this handguard if you needed to, if you needed your mount to extend out that far. The upper Picatinny rails also lightened. So that's a pretty cool feature. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty big handguard. It's not as comfortable to hold as some of the slimmer options, but for shooting off of a barricade or prone or a bag, which is how this rifle is usually shot, it's pretty nice. Also, the bigger diameter, I believe they, they list online that you can fit up to a one and a half inch suppressor in there if that's something that interests you. So the barrel itself is Ballistic Advantage's SPR 18 inch barrel, chambered in 223 Wild. This one is fluted. It's a 416R barrel and it is a one and eight twist. And this barrel weighs 32 ounces. Uh, for reference, the non-fluted version of this weighs 41 ounces and they're 17.7 inch Hanson profile, which you can look up if you're not familiar with what that is, but that one weighs 32 ounces. So you're getting a pretty heavy profile barrel and not too much of a weight penalty versus the Hanson profile if you go for the fluted option, so that's nice. It is bead blast, it's a stainless steel, like I said, 416R, but it is bead blasted. And the bead blasting finish is really nice and consistent. There's not any spots that sometimes on cheaper finishes you can kind of tell where it's not as even. And then the flutes are also cut really nicely. If you've ever held or looked at a cheaper fluted barrel, oftentimes the flutes can feel really sharp or not look perfectly straight cut, but these, these barrels of high quality, and it kind of shows. So talking now about the actual receiver itself. So this upper receiver is Aero Precision's M4E1. Uh, one gripe that I have is that the, the dust cover that it came with is seems to be pretty low quality. That or maybe it's just used. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but um, maybe I'll throw in a picture. But the it looks really beat up and, and used. Not necessarily the marks from it opening, but just on the cover itself. It, it looks pretty beat up, so that was, I mean, it doesn't affect functionality at all, but, you know, obviously we'd like to see a little bit higher quality there. Other than that, we can just talk a little bit about how it shoots. Um, obviously, with a rifle length gas system, the recoil is about as minimal as you can get, and with a heavier barrel and bigger handguard, it, it, the recoil impulse is really really soft and it's nice to shoot, makes it easy for follow-up targets. Not that recoil is a huge issue with a 223 rifle, but that's just worth noting. Um, on the other note, I have almost 300 rounds to this rifle without a single issue yet, so that's a pretty good indication that the gas port's on straight, the gas uh, port cut into the barrel is of correct diameter, all those things seem to be squared away. So we can talk now about accuracy. If you watch the overview for this whole build that this uh, upper sits on, this part will be a little bit repetitive, but we can talk first about these groups here that I'll roll an image of. So these were shot at 100 yards. The top three were shot with federal gold medal match and the rest of them were shot with PPU match. And the image will have the annotations on there of all the sizes, so I don't have to bore you by reading them, but you can pause them and take a look. And on this next image, the seven smaller squares were all PPU match groups at 100 yards, and then the three larger squares on the bottom were fired at 200 yards. So you can see this rifle's hovering at right over one MOA. Um, I anticipate that possibly this rifle, after about 400 rounds or so, will get under an MOA. I mentioned this in the build video, but the last SPR I put together, 
it really kind of honed in and maxed out on accuracy after about 400 to 450 rounds. So hopefully we're getting some more rounds through this guy, getting up to that 300 mark and getting a little over that. I, I, I suspect that we get a little more accuracy and that this rifle sits right under an MOA. If that does happen, I'll make an update video and show that to you guys. But this next image here, or the next images are gonna be from a day where we took this rifle shooting out to range. Uh, we made hits with it out to 700 pretty easily. Didn't attempt any further than that just because we didn't have a uh, steel target out that far, but all of these shown were with PPU match, the 75 grains. Uh, this first image here is just for reference where we were shooting. The target on the left is at 400 yards. The target on the right side of the scope is 600 yards. And then even further to the right, there is a 700 yard target uh, that you can't see in that image. But we'll start with the 400 yard. Uh, it's hard to see because there's a lot of dings on this target, but I did my best to circle the group and draw yellow arrows to the small little 223 holes you can see. I did not write down the measurements, but I believe this group was just over four inches, maybe four and a quarter, four and a half. So that was pretty impressive. And then the next image we can talk about here was one fired at 600 yards. And again, I did not write down the actual measurements of these groups, but I do remember this one was under six inches, probably about five and a half, five and three quarter, but it was a hair under six. So that's under MOA at 600 yards. And that was really impressive. And the next image you're gonna see is at 700 yards. And this, I believe, was about an eight and a half inch group, which is also impressive for me with this rifle at that range, uh, given that the ammo we're using is not of the highest quality. I've had good luck with PPU match, but then again, it, it, uh, it probably is of lower quality than something like a hand load or federal gold metal match. But just speaking on overall impressions, uh, first thing, would I buy it again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been really impressed with this rifle. The finish is really good, and especially for the price that I got it at, at about 485 bucks. This thing seems like a steal. Now that does not include a charging handle or a bolt carrier group, but inside we just have arrows, uh, black nitride, BCG. But yeah, I would absolutely buy it again. I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find an SPR upper of this quality, uh, a complete upper, I should say, of this quality for that price, especially getting the enhanced handguard option, which is nice, and then sort of the billet look and other features we discussed that come with the enhanced option. So yeah, I've been really impressed with this rifle. We've had no malfunctions so far. And with that being said, that's all we got for today. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike and let me know in the comments below why. But with that, thanks for watching.